week. And uh, today we decided that Ileana, uh, my significant other half here in the country, has a new job and she's going to be the weather forecaster. And on a daily basis, she will announce that there will not be any snow in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> so, you know, that's just a safe, safe job to have. There may have been even snow yes. in Alberta and British Columbia or something like that, I understand. So, welcome everybody. I'm very pleased to, uh, to have two of our uh, veterans in the e-club uh, area, but as we have been pursuing this for the last uh, couple of years, Martin and... Um, and who's the, who's the other guy? Okay, well, Michael, something like that. Uh, they'll introduce themselves later. They'll talk to us about workplace and how we can in, uh, utilize that to communicate as an intranet situation within the club. So without any further ado, I'd like to give the floor to Martin and give the screen to Martin. And okay. um, we'll go from there, please. Okay, thanks, uh, Peter. Uh, before I actually share the screen, I just actually go through a couple of points. Um, we we've been using Workplace now, as um, Peter said, for a couple of years, and certainly the first six months or so, it was a blind leading the blind, and uh, we came <laughs> through that um, sort of uh, hellfire, and, uh, and and have now found ourselves uh, being able to use it quite quite extensively and it is actually a cornerstone of our club um so workplace is really our our club and our club room um michael has um actually joined our our um club uh, sorry our internet uh, our intranet um this afternoon in order to um uh to see whether or not we can do some interclub collaborations so but I'll talk about that in a few moments but in essence we use the workplace extensively in our club to connect communicate and collaborate and uh, we do that between members and even outside <coughs> people and organizations uh, we work using groups notification and chat and uh, what I'm going to do is just start with um with a video um, which is only a only a, about a minute long which uh, will give you a an overview, and then I'll go into it in detail from our from our live from our intranet um, workplace platform. If it works, can you hear that? Yeah. The new workplace experience makes it easier than ever to switch between groups, notifications, and chats by bringing them all into the newly redesigned left-hand navigation bar. Not only does the new design allow Workplace to load faster than before, it also makes it easier for me and my team to focus on the information that matters most to us. The new group's layout is not only cleaner and easier to read, it also lets me easily see how many unread posts are in the most important groups. And the new notification section has been entirely overhauled with an inbox style that makes it much easier to keep the notifications organized. And my team loves the fact that they can now use the notifications filter to focus specifically on tags and replies, which means we never miss critical information in Workplace. As great as the new groups and notification layouts are, for my organization, it's the redesigned chat experience that's made the biggest difference. Chats are now featured prominently in the Workplace experience, which means it's easy for us to talk to each other about the work we're doing using just one tool. Workplace kept the inbox experience, but now chats are easier to read and better organized. So chat is more powerful and less cluttered. And if we really want to reduce the clutter, we can now easily collapse the left and right side navigation bars, allowing us to focus entirely on our newsfeed of group posts. Now that we're using the new workplace experience, me and my team have never felt more efficient. Okay, so that gives a quick overview. What you're now seeing is uh, our live um, intranet for the eClub of Innovation. And as you can see, on the left-hand side, you've got really very simple areas. You've got home, 
notifications, chat, and there's an admin panel. But I won't go into the admin panel because that's um, that's really for people who are going to do the admin themselves. But I, I'll go through the user experience really. So you click onto the um, onto the home area, and that gives you a variety of um, options. You've got the news feed. And the news feed is really just to give you an overview of everything that's been posted that day. Um, if you click see more, um, then you then opens up a number of areas like we've got a resources section. And in the resources section, we use that to be able to give our members information that is beneficial to them. At the moment, the main one is uh, getting new members. And uh, there's a website there that we've created uh, so it can link to that resource. Okay, I won't click on there because I want to stay on, on the intranet. Also, we've introduced RSS feeds from RI and um, several of us didn't really understand RSS feeds. So there's a resource there to, to actually go and say, what is an RSS feed? So again, it goes to an external link where you can find that in, information. Um, <clears throat> going down the list, You've got events, and we don't use this as much as maybe we, we will do in the future. Uh, we haven't got any events coming at the moment, but if I look at some of the past events, and um, we can see uh, there was a we did a we did a virtual treasure hunt, which some of you may have heard about, and um, that was in June, and um, that was that was posted by our president as then. Uh, we had a conversation with um, an A lister. Uh, star in the UK, um, Adia Depitan, and uh, that was notified that way. So you can post events in the same way as you can post them in, um, uh, in, in Facebook, but it's within your own private uh, viewing. People directory is quite simply who is, who is in our, who's in our club. Okay, and you've got the various people, um, you can see all the way through how you can sort of identify the members okay um, the other bits really we don't use organization chart because it's really designed for a business and we're not a business so it's nothing to do with that uh, if you wanted to follow colleagues and you just click on um, you click on there and you can follow a colleague uh, if you if you want to follow a co-worker um, but the integrations is the final one that I wanted to sort of talk about in this area which is um, you can integrate a variety of apps apps and um, you can do things like survey monkey we've got zoom that we integrate into it and google drive so that we can all as a as a club use those tools um we're testing out trello at the moment uh jury's out for me on on that one um but they're all fairly popular add-ons and um there's a number of apps you can actually use but we're just using those at the moment okay so i'll see less there um, the thing I like about the screen is the fact that uh, it's very, very simple. Um, I've mentioned about uh, we go, we use groups, notifications, and chats. And uh, the groups, you can actually have um, shortcuts if you want, um, so that you don't have all the groups. If you've got 20 or 30 or 40 groups, and you might just want a few of the key ones that you want to look at. Um, the first one, we've, in, we've created a group called Coffee Pot, which is really our sort of catch-all cafe, uh, online cafe, where we uh, sort of share information generally and talk about uh, a variety of things. So if I click on there, you'll be able to see what, what it means. Okay. It's a little slow because it's um, online. Okay, so Caroline, one of our members, um, she threw out that uh, this afternoon that she was, or earlier on today, uh, that she her computer's uh, causing her major problems. She hasn't got a clue what to do about it. She knows she's got to upgrade to 10, uh, but doesn't know what to do. So um, various members have actually uh, made comments. There's been 12 previous comments. And... Um, uh, Really, we're helping her to um, to sort out what what she needs. Um, okay, um, this one was posted. One of our members actually recently completed the Prudential 100 Mile London Race, um, a cycle ride, and he raised 715 pounds for lung cancer. So we just really kept people informed in that way. Um, Pat 
is one of our members who um, is forever raising money uh, for all sorts of different things. And um, she's just made notification to us that she's received a check from uh, the Walcott um, and uh, gone through that. So we can then share how we do that. Okay. Um, so, so the coffee pot is, um, oh, and th th this is probably the most important one. Our current president is Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca is a 26 year old um, young lady who's married and has one child. In fact, uh, as of August the 5th, um, she's now got two children and um, Poppy joined the clan um, on August the 5th and uh, she eventually communicated that uh, to us. Um, once she'd let all of her family know. So we we're just able to do a bit of a congratulation job on it. Okay, now that's that's the, the lighter area. The bar is even lighter still, because the bar is really to separate from sort of serious uh, stuff into uh, maybe like in this case, Pat has posted a prayer, which is a funny prayer as it happens. Um, we wish birthday, we use the bar to wish people a happy birthday. So um, it was Eddie's birthday. So we just sort of said happy birthday to him. And um, uh, somebody was sharing a joke. Um, I did this uh, take on, um, I just shared this take. This isn't mine, but I, I shared this take on the, res the president's um, connecting the world. Okay. So those two are really the social side of... Um, of, of our intranet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if we get down to some more serious stuff, projects. When I think I've said on a previous occasion, when I was first presenting to traditional clubs particularly, I was always asked three questions. Um, how, do you, how do you do fellowship? How do you do projects? And which real club do you belong to? And um, I, concentrating on this one, how we do projects is different to a traditional club. In a traditional club, the tendency is to actually have a club project and um, and then everybody buys into that club project and gets on with it. In our club, anyone, any member can actually have a um, an idea and um, they post that idea in project ideas, okay? And... Um, when they, put, they post it in there and then people buy into it and say, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, I'll go with that. Or most people, uh, or they might just say, no, we don't like it. Um, and then it either uh, dies or a discussion takes place. Um, in this case, um, we've created a project group called Crowdfunding Teach the Teacher uh, because um, we're uh, embarking on an exploratory crowdfunding experience which is being done by one of our other members John Beer and um, the the project crowdfunding um, teach the teacher project was actually discussed and, and generally agreed to be John made a presentation to the club um, some of you who jo joined us that night might remember and the essence was that we would try to uh, use a crowdfunding platform and um, once that was done um, we create a project. So you, project ideas, you float the project. If you get support, then what happens is you then create a, a group um, where that project team get on and do the project. So we might have 20 projects on the go, for instance, and uh, work on that basis. Um, I'll run through a couple of these others. You've got weekly speakers, which um, at the moment we're in a recess because of holidays um, and holidays of speakers in particular. Uh, so I'm sorry it's a bit slow. Um, we've, uh, we've given a notification that we're having a break from the speakers. And um, because I said it was we're having a break from during the uh, August period, uh, what I didn't realize was that um, that in actual fact, uh, one of the nights was in July. So I got picked up on it and we said, oh, sorry, I didn't think about tonight being uh, July. So we had immediate information and immediate feedback to all the members about what was going on. Okay. Uh, other club visits. Uh, so people report back as to if they have visited another club and um, that enables us to know what 
the members are doing. Um, so uh, Michelle wanted to go and um, visit another club and uh, she wasn't sure what she had to do in terms of taking evidence with her. So um, people were, were giving comments back to her about that. Uh, Jack said that, you know, you just turn up basically. <laughs> Oh, you let the you let the uh, secretary know and then just turn off. Um, club business meetings again. We hold a club business meeting rather than a club council because we feel that the whole club should be involved, and this platform enable enables us to do that as well. So uh, we post our club finances so that people know and we're transparent. This one's uh, quite an interesting one, and this is the one which actually I was referring to with Michael, which is. Um, the Rotary E Club of One World. The Rotary E Club of One World is Michael's club. And Michael actually um, is using um, workplace as well. And But what we can do is we can, in fact, connect with each other in order to um, share, collaborate between the two clubs. And this is a new venture for us. We're just really testing this out at the moment. In fact, it's hot off the press yesterday, really. So um, it's about, uh, it's called multi-company groups and um, you can invite anyone to join those. You can set up a multi-company group and those external people can join that group. They won't see the rest of the club business, but they'll see the business relating to that. And our members can exchange with it as well. Um, other groups that we've got are club membership. Uh, club membership is um, literally we notify people uh, we notify all the club members that if we've got a new member joining us and uh, it's the area where we not only uh, give a seven day notice we actually also um, we also welcome them too uh, Frank has, was asking about associate fees what 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 sort of fees are done there uh, and he, he got his answers fairly quickly I won't go through all of these um, but the rest are projects. You've got an e-recipe project. Uh, we've got a glass recycling project. We've got the crowdfunding project that I mentioned. And if we see all of the areas, um, then um, you can see that there's uh, uh, things like the club executive, the future of our club. Um, and uh, there's a school in the bag project where we send, um, or we arrange to send um, school equipment to um, overseas. Um, there's a special interest group for genealogy and um, that gives you I think an idea of, of the sort of things that, uh, that occur there. Okay. Um, we then can go on to notifications and notifications are really just um, an inbox, as we said in the video, where you can actually see who has said what. So Stuart commented on a post I was following. Um, Bernard, I invited to an external, uh, he's an external, uh, he's the president of the E-Club of uh, London Centenary, and he's working with me and uh, Peter and uh, a few of us um, to develop the Rotary E-Club Fellowship and um, we're calling it the Club Fellowship Directors Group. So and anyone from external can come and join that group if we invite them to it, okay? Um, Caroline replied to some things. So you can look down here and see what you want. If, if I haven't read them, there's a blue light, a blue button there. So I know at a glance which ones are new. The most interesting one is chat. Now in chat, um, we can, let me see, where are we? Um, let's go to Pat. So a chat with Pat, there we are, okay. Um, Pat and I, Pat is actually um, quite instrumental in um, a group, an action group, a rotary action group called RAGAS, which is uh, rotary, um, action group against slavery and uh, she and I both um, went to a webinar last week uh, two, two nights ago two or three nights ago and um, we just shared information about it she stayed a bit longer but she felt that uh, they were trying to get funding which is understandable um, other parts of the agenda were good 
but no difference uh, really to other anti-slavery organisations. So we were sharing our, our information about um, about how we felt about it and uh, what we can do. Um, and she's involved in a place called the Kita House, which uh, she was telling us about uh, women being trafficked um, in that country. Um, the uh, Caroline is um, our member up in Scotland and um, uh, we just had a chat about um, uh, health health issues in that case. Paul Grant, he works in Qatar and um, he has uh, he's sort of been communicating with us about a number of a number of issues okay and um, and you get the drift now uh, you may have to move um, the sidebar but you can actually not just use text you can actually go on to a video call or a telephone call um, or you can customise the chat and you can pin chats so that you can manage them better or you can hide a chat as well. But the, and several of our members, Caroline and Jack, are working on a recipe project and they actually often communicate using um, the video chat uh, between the two. She's in Scotland and he's in Illinois. So, so that's how that works. Um, in essence, that's the sort of flavour of it. So at that point, I think, uh, Peter, I'll, I'll stop um, and uh, stop sharing and pass it over to um, either pass it, well, I'll pass it back to you and then um, uh, you can introduce um, Michael. Okay, thanks very much, Martin. And we'll, we'll wait with the questions then until after uh, Michael has done his share uh, of, the, of the presentation. So. Uh, Michael Henstra from eClub World One is going to uh, uh, tell us what they are doing in regards to workplace. Well, thank you, Peter. It's actually One World rather than World One. It's uh, that's close enough, though. But in any event, it's the and I'm sure I add much to what uh, Martin has already kind of gone through. Went through the, much of the basics. Let me. I'll, I went up to, and brought up my admin screen as well. Um, I got the chat up there. Um, just to see that you can, by moving your pointer over to the left after collapsing it, you can re-expand the menu on the left-hand side. And as Martin pointed out earlier, you can collapse the menu on the right-hand side. It gives you more screen space. Um, I brought this up uh, so that you can see that we're thinking about doing a peace poll project and uh, that it, it's a, a project that might bring all kinds of um, eat clubs together around the world to get involved with their local Rotary Club to consider placing a peace poll in their community in one or more places, whether it be a school or a, some sort of a public place. There was a recent posting on Facebook that showed uh, that indicated that there is now a peace poll on every nation in the world. So that might be something we can look into at another time, but <clears throat> this particular group is a group that we have. It's, uh, we are a peace builder club, and this is our group that we've created for that. And uh, among the things that you can do within groups, uh, as Martin was mentioning earlier, now this one apparently does not have that. I'll go back to our we have what is Martin's Coffee Pot is our member announcements and discussions. And you can see that in this group, you can actually create a group phone call with the entire group or a video call, or you can actually chat here too. This bringing up a chat from within the group then sends a chat message to all members of the group. And in this case, we, we have all of our members as a part of this group. We also have, um, for our board of directors, for example, is a closed group. And then this way we can make posts and so forth, you even conduct business and have votes and polls on things. You can create a poll much like you can do in Facebook. And the same thing, we could send a chat message to every one of the board of directors should we want to do that. And you can see we have done that. <clears throat> Um, I think uh, 
Martin did a really a great job of covering everything uh, in, in sort of highlighting things. So I would be happy to answer any questions that somebody might have at this point. And I'll uh, stop to share at this point so we can see who is who might have a question. Yeah, any we questions? have, uh, and we'll have small enough group. So please raise your hand in the screen or, you know, those that uh, are uh, not using the video, just holler. And uh, then we can uh, can go to, to some questions. I, I will start off with the first one, Martin. Uh, um, what is the percentage or the participation of your membership in this? Because, you know, you have to be online, you have to be on the computer or on your phone in order to do that. And is the 80-20 rule applying here as well? Or do you no, no, feel it's quite... that it has got better? Yeah, initially, um, the engagement was pretty, pretty low, uh, to be honest. Um, the, um, uh, the reason for that was because when we, did it. I think I said we, it was the blind leading the blind. And what we hadn't realized was that we'd set everybody to receive every notification. So within about three days, they got everybody, all the members got bombarded with a um, huge amount of information. And uh, that put a lot of people off. Um, so um, uh, so that, that we learned fairly quickly. And we had to recover from that. And that took a little time to do that. We're now getting back to probably... Um, I would say 60% of the people at some point connect and collaborate and communicate through this methodology. And um, uh, the ones that weren't doing, we have had a, two or three members leave, but we've had new members join. And as new members have joined, what we've done is to actually engage them with it in a more positive way. So I think uh, the ones that have left were the ones that were not using it, to be honest. And, and I think they were finding that they, they well, certainly, certainly four of the members um, found that they were much more comfortable in a land-based club. But interestingly, they still visit us from time to time. I mean, you, you know yourself because you've been on our meetings and uh, um, some of those people do still pop back and, and, join us um, occasionally, but they prefer their traditional rotary and have chosen to move that direction. Well, that's it. You know, we haven't lost them out of rotary. We've just lost them to another club. Um, but, so, so if you want to get a hold of me, say I'm in your club and you yeah. want to get a hold of me, how do I get notified? Is that through email or how do you do uh, it? Depends how you set your notifications up. But I mean, I've got on my um, telephone, if somebody posts um, a chat to me, then that chat pops up on my mobile phone um, okay. and I can sort of answer it or not. And, and uh, uh, you can also, uh, I think I showed you that you could either have telephone or um or video so uh sometimes you can you can find that uh, somebody will pop up on a video and they'll either pop up on the video on your laptop or on or on the mobile phone in fact they've popped up on both on one occasion that was really confusing but uh, <laughs> uh we haven't tried the video chat uh, i i assume that works fairly well martin with regard to uh, starting it you can actually start a video chat from within the group which everyone, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can you can use the video chat. Um, as I said, uh, two of our members who are working on a project uh, regularly chat with each other using video chat, um, and they sometimes actually use Zoom, and they can connect with Zoom either by going outside of the internet or even actually using the uh, app within the internet uh, within the internet to um, to use Zoom if they wanted. So. Um, so it's, it's quite flexible in lots of ways. Yeah. Very good. William, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I have a few questions, but I, I had to run out a couple of times, so I'm sorry. Uh, one is, there is this a free application or is there a cost? Uh -huh. It's um, Surprisingly, it's free. Um, it's, okay. not, it's not that easy to, um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I meant to actually get the link to um, uh, to find it. Facebook actually provide it free to um, non-profits, and that's how we it's got called, on. Yeah, it's called Workplace for Good. Uh, work, that's it, Workplace for Good. Thanks, workplace Mike. Workplace for Good, okay. Uh, second question is, uh, have you ever heard of a program called Slack, S-L-A-C-K? It's, yeah. it's similar, 
uh, the reason I'm asking you that, uh, obviously you've done the research, is how is workplace different and or better? Do you want to answer that, Michael? Or? Well, I, I can't make that comparison since I have no experience with Slack. I only can tell you from what I've heard from others who have used Slack and have then given up Slack and gone to workplace. Okay. So I guess that's kind of a good... I've, I've actually used Slack and I've actually got a, we've, we've actually got a Slack account. And um, uh, if you notice, we had Trello, uh, William, we had Trello on our integrations. And Trello is, again, a similar type of thing to Slack, but a, a much much more simpler one and um uh you can you can test those integrations to actually work together and in and unison with it at the moment slack isn't part of an integration with with workplace but i think it will be in time and um uh, the difference really is that there is much more flexibility and it's much easier to use and much easier to track what you're doing and because most because an awful lot of people use facebook the beauty of it is that it follows similar to Facebook um, methodologies, really. You know, you've got groups, you've got chats, you've got messaging and, and so on. So, so that, that's why we went for it as well, because it, it, it emulated the Facebook um, situation. And it, if I, before I come um, to, to Matt, um, Rudy, I think, asked the question about what, why is it different to a Facebook page? The difference between that and a, the difference between the intranet and a Facebook page is, a, the workplace intranet is a total platform for our club and for and it's dedicated to that club um, and is not necessarily not public in that respect um, and and therefore that that lends itself to being a, a, an online rotary club um, platform in that way. Sorry. You don't. You don't need a personal Facebook account in order to be uh, no, no. Okay. workplace. I just have one last question, Matt, uh, on my list. Is um, is there a mobile app for this? Can you download it to your phone so you can receive a uh, notification? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's the way you get, really receive the notifications. That's when I can see if I need to go to my computer to respond and it'd be easier sometimes for me to respond to my computer but yeah you download the mobile app and then it's there and then you get um, notifications of either someone has liked the post that you did or has sent you a chat all those oh there it is <laughs> oh. <laughs> cool <The> thank you <laughs> very cool it's yeah and it's very easy to to use it's <clears throat> And Martin was saying it took a while for his club to kind of get used to it. It has taken over a year for our club to really start getting engaged. But the last six months has been much more activity and sharing of ideas and events and just uh, people visiting different places and posting their pictures. It's just the, the normal engagement you would hope to get from members in the e-club. Great. Other questions? Matt, did you have a question? Yeah, just... Still muted? There we go. No, okay, um, yeah. I had two questions. Does, does This runs obviously on, on Facebook, on the Facebook platform, this, this program. What's the degree of integration between workplace and Facebook? Well, that's that's what I was just saying, that it really has no even though it is a product of Facebook, it does not, and it's Facebook-like, it's Facebook-friendly, so to speak, it is a separate platform from Facebook, and that's why you don't need a Facebook account in order to be a member or to start a workplace account. Okay. And so it, 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 and that, that's the thing that scared some of our members that, oh my gosh, I don't want to have anything to do with Facebook. Well, right. there, there is no connection to Facebook other than it is a platform that was created by Facebook. Martin? Okay. Yes, yeah. I would agree with that. Totally. It's like scotch and, and bourbon, you know, it looks like a good whiskey, but you know, the other one is not a good, as good as <laughs> it had nothing to do with each other, but the one grew out of the other by caskets. So. <laughs> Matt, other question? No, that was it. James. Yes, okay. you said um, you can get this for free at workplace for good. When I originally looked into this a while back when this was screaming the buzz greatest thing that was ever invented since 
perforated toilet paper. <laughs> the, the, the feedback I got was it was charged per user per month and it was pretty expensive. How do you qualify for this nonprofit? Do you have to be, do you have to have documentation? What, what, how do you get, how do you get this for free? Pardon? Yeah. Um, at the beginning, as I said, it was a blind leading the blind. I didn't know whether we were going to get it or not because I thought we had to prove we were a charity and we had to have charity numbers and all this sort of stuff. Um, but I actually just filled their stuff in and uh, proved that we were, well, I say proved. Uh, I can't remember how I proved it now, to be honest, James. We, um, I think we did send some documentation through, but I think it was only a, a question of verification that we were non-profit and as a rotary organization then um i think that is accepted as a, as a non-profit as well and um i have to say in the early days i was really surprised that we got it free and i was really chuffed but then um i noticed that it was actually something they offered as part of their social responsibility so i think they they are keen to support um non-profits for, so that they can demonstrate their social responsibility to the world so you are right. right. You, you are right. If you actually go in as a as an um, ordinary customer, then it is actually quite expensive because you have to pay per user, and, um, and, it, and it's I think three dollars per user per use, and and it soon adds up quite extensively. Well, so, that's the same the same with Zoom. If you have a company and everybody has a Zoom account, that's everybody pays for each pro Zoom account. Mm -hmm. Whereas we, as a club, use one Zoom account and manage you know around that so we don't have that corporation corporate uh, charge but yes when i first was told about it too i checked it several times and it as you go through the process even though we haven't signed up it's right there if you're non-profit there's no charge and there's no big deal when you show that and as rotary i think you have that advantage that it's recognizable and easily verifiable for them too that you are indeed a non-profit rotary group other question james well, we could try it. I mean, it's just like PayPal. It's you can't. It's impossible to get it as a nonprofit, unless you are an actual registered nonprofit profit organization. They just they want the documentation, and we didn't have it. Yeah, you mean they asked for a five hundred one c three verification, right. right? Or that you are incorporated as a nonprofit. They didn't. They didn't ask. They didn't ask for anything like that from us, uh, James. Uh, they only ask us um, uh, to to sort of verify that we were a Rotary Club and that we were a non-profit uh, organisation. Um, and I think it was a matter of statements. I've just put up onto the screen uh, the Workplace for Good um, screen. It's um, uh, it's actually facebook.com forward slash Facebook. What happens if you click on pricing, Martin? Does it show somewhere there that you can show that it's a non-profit? That it doesn't um, cost anything? I was going to say, because it's a couple of are years you ago. Gonna buy, are you, are you going to buy another member? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. 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 Um, it says free for non-profit. Yeah, I just signed up. Uh, yeah, it just says now. free for non-profits, yeah. I, I just signed up now with an account and it's fine, but then didn't charge anything, didn't ask for anything. You just did it right now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but the bill is in the mail, they say that to you. You didn't use my name, did you? <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure things have changed since I created our account. It was back in January of 2018, so mm -hmm. it was a long time ago, and I, I've slept since then. But I, I re recollect that one of the problems was when I entered my e my personal email address, it didn't accept that. It needed an organizational email address. And so I happen, we happened to have a email URL for at the time for the president. So it entered in oneworldrotary.org and it accepted that. And there was just a little checkbox to say that I'm a nonprofit and click that checkbox. I think it was actually Brian that mentioned that, Martin, when we were asking about that at one point. And, um, and it just went on through. And from then on, it's, there's never been a charge. They never asked for any verification because I created 
the name of the uh, group or, or account is the Rotary Club of One World. So I figured they wouldn't they wouldn't um, could possibly imagine that any business would use that that uh, account name. So yeah, I just use my personal email. I, it it did allow me to skip the work email portion, so I entered oh. my personal. And oh, right. then they made a change in that then. Well, very good. I, I'm glad that you did that because I've been wanting to do that. was afraid to start another account and go through the hassle, but that's great. I, that's good information. Of course, there's, there's a lot of nonprofit organizations that don't have a, have a yeah. URL and everything like that too. So yeah. Easy yeah. To make. So, any we other questions about, uh, about this? We have other, other, you know, uh, I, you things you haven't other, touched yet. James, go ahead. Well, the only other thing I have is how do you get the members to get involved? We have we have a private fight Facebook page, and that works very well for those that are used to Facebook. Then we have resistance from s some older members that don't want to have anything to do with Facebook. Yeah. Um, well, that was, this is the one thing that you can sell workplace to them because that they it does really have no connection to Facebook what we all think of as the Facebook account. And they don't need a Facebook account to participate, but it's just a way of getting, if you want to be a Rotarian, you've got to figure out some way to get connected. And this has been a struggle in our club ever since I've been a part of it, but it, things are starting to pick up within our workplace intranet, and it's, it's becoming more exciting. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say is that Workplace do provide a variety of resources, and uh, this is a particularly good one. Um, you've got the Getting Started uh, bit, which if you go into the, the, the Getting Started section, then it tells you, um, I wish we, this wasn't around when, when we started ours. If you're new to Workplace, you've got the System ad Admin Guide, the User Guide. The User Guide was actually what I actually played at the beginning um, for you. Uh, the people manager guide, the executive guide. Um, and then when you want to launch Workplace, how to launch it, what's the best way to launch it through your enterprise and so on. Um, but the one that is really good that I found um, and use quite a bit uh, when I get back to it, uh, uh, if I can get back, just bear with me. Yeah, is the ways to use it in your Workplace. And we're actually going to explore um opportunities to find ways to engage sorry to welcome new members um and uh there was one here which was okay you, you have to translate it from being because it's obviously aimed at the corporate um but onboarding to integrate new hires effectively and um uh the new hires one when i read when i watched that i thought now that's quite a that's quite a good opportunity um, for us to uh, to be able to use it the way that they're suggesting. Um, so they call it building culture and um, transforming the onboard experience. I won't show you the whole thing, but I'll just quickly share it with you so that you can see. Um, he says, <laughs> yeah. come on, oh, here we go. Onboarding sounds kind of from 2,200 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Walk in the plank or something like that. Welcome to the Workplace Strategy video series. In this session, you'll learn four ways to transform your new hire onboarding experience using Workplace. Workplace transforms our onboarding process even before new hires start. Like when we were interviewing, we add new hires to a secret pre onboarding multi company group via their personal email address. Our onboarding team loves how easy it is to answer questions and share information to prepare new hires for their first day. And new hires appreciate the early sense of familiarity and belonging with the organization. The pre-onboarding group finishes serving its purpose when new hires start, so we then archive it. Workplace makes it easy to welcome new hires. They are automatically added to a new hire group when they claim their workplace account at orientation. So you can that that gives you a, a sort of a taste as to what um, uh, what can occur. And uh, as I say, the tools um, that they offer, the resources are pretty good. Um, now, how do you get to that particular? I haven't seen that, Martin. Um, I can't remember actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you um, you go to if you if you search for 
uh, workbook by fa- sorry workplace by Facebook resources. Okay. Then it'll give you it'll give you it. Yeah. So, but they've got very good support in that respect. I think. You know. I'm just going to put Darren on the spot. Darren, I notice you've been nodding your head quite uh, quite vigorously throughout the presentation. Do you have a sort of a, a comment to add to what Martin and Michael have, have been chatting about? Um, yeah, I just see this as um, it, it solves a lot of challenges that we've had as a club uh, in terms of just getting people to talk and engage. Uh, email is very difficult. I can see this as a, <clears throat> as a very good tool <clears throat> to start off just off getting off of emails and communicating through here just as a start. I mean, not, not transferring all of our club files and, and, you know, all of that into the groups yet, but getting started just to eliminate emails. Um, it's, uh, it's easier to get new members, younger members on board a platform like this, uh, rather than, you know, attend the zoom meeting. So, uh, yeah, I can see our Zoom meetings are great. We have them kind of less often, uh, but I see this as filling in the gaps in between so we don't lose engagements. It makes it easier. We're an e-club, so like everybody else, so it's hard to communicate stuff. Everything's through emails, so this is much easier. Uh, storing files, um, announcements, you know, dues, communicating all that stuff through here makes it a little bit easier. And for James, when I signed up, it only asked for email. It didn't ask for any personal information, no contact form to fill out, just email and add access to this page, my own. I just have to customize it to our club and I'll, I'll shoot it off to our members to start using. Can you put your uh, registration process up on the screen and click us through it? Oh uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it well, I, have to, I kind of have to do it again. I can show you the process. It, it really was less than five minutes. Um, let me try this here. Here, I'll do, I'll start from Google. So it's nice and easy. Place by Facebook. So I just asked you to sign up by putting my personal email address right. and continue. Uh, what happens is the next page, uh, they send you an email with a six digit verification code. You just grab your email, punch it in and you're in. That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was it. It does ask you for business email, but I entered my personal Gmail. It was fine. Okay. Yeah. And once you, once I did that, I just ended up at uh, this page. Okay. Yeah, just the blank kind of default same page that we saw in the presentation. And it's a matter of updating the banners and updating the names. Yeah. There's already pre-built ones for you, so that's nice. Uh, but yeah, so far from what I've seen, it's very simple layout. Uh, yeah. I think that's what I like about it, yeah. um, is the fact that it is, it is very simple to use and very easy to use. And since they've revamped, because they've revamped it recently, and uh, since the revamp, it's even, it's even better to use than it was previously. Um, I mean, we use it to, um, uh, to great effect. I mean, uh, um, Kitty, for instance, Kitty is um, uh, one of our honorary members uh, in our club. We have a group called Active Honorary, and uh, Kitty is um, uh, now um, within our club uh, as well as a, uh, her other club, and um, she uses that um, uh, quite uh, quite regularly and can keep pace with what the members are actually saying as well. So I think I don't know if you want to say anything about that, uh, Kitty. No, it's just a very interesting platform. Very interesting. It actually didn't even pull in my picture. It, it created me as a new profile. So it's not connected to Facebook at all. Like I use my, it's the same email for Facebook and here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's treating me as a totally different new person. There's no Facebook connection. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Darren. Great. Thanks everybody. And thanks specifically uh, Martin and uh, and uh, Michael about uh, making this 
more clear and introducing us to workplace. And I think it is a tool that we need to consider. We need, each club will need a champion, obviously, to start selling it amongst, and I know our club has a champion already because Kitty is members from many are participating <laughs> in many clubs. So, uh, you know, works with that as well. But uh, regardless, there needs to be, uh, you know, a great, it looks like indeed a great tool that we can be using. Uh, well, I think we can explore these, um, these multi-company groups as Martin has set up so we can have some integration from different e-clubs into a particular common group that, that we can yeah. show throughout the whole e-club world. I I agree yeah. with that, Michael. I think that's that's the idea. I like um, the the uh, hesitancy that some of the Rotarians have to get involved with um, a, a program such as this. When you're talking about the theme this year, Rotary connects the world. If if Rotary cannot connect the club, then yeah. we're, <laughs> we're going to have a little t challenge connecting the world. Well. Oh, very good. <laughs> At some point, and I'm going to just drop this little bomb in front of everybody, but we need some sort of a common thing that all e-clubs can get behind. And and I had a conversation briefly with Brian a few days ago about a peace poll project supported by e-clubs around the world that, that would give them the opportunity to engage with their local Rotary Club and sell them on the idea and... and uh, start a peace pool project within their communities. And that would be something that would be sort of led by e-clubs and e-clubbers all over the world. And that's interesting, Michael, because one of the things that could be done is you could set up the multi-company group and call it uh, peace, whatever you want to call it. And, um, uh, and you could invite even the land-based club members who are interested to actually join that group. So it isn't just exclusive to e-clubs. Um, well, no, they, right, and that what I was, my idea was that e-club members around the world, if we can get them engaged in this, gives them an opportunity to make contact with their local terror base, okay, their yeah. local terror club, yeah. to provide them or to present this possibility with, and it's e-club members that it will be sort of taking the point in engaging their local Rotarians to get behind the idea of of having one or more peace poles within their community, so it's a it's a way to get our e club Rotarians engaged with their local Rotary clubs to that extent. And of course, the local Rotary club would be the funding source for that. And then they don't have to be expensive. It's just a a would be a global effort of e clubs getting Rotarians to get behind a peace pole in their community. So. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Great, yeah. Very yeah. great idea, and I. And I I have uh, updated my mailing list of all the e-clubs around the world. Now there is a new Rotary year and it's been two years ago since I started. So we have a way of sending emails to 280 e-clubs around the world. Wonderful. So if we can put something together to that and utilize this recording in there as well after we you know, get it on uh, published uh, on YouTube or, or Vimeo and, and then say, listen, this is something that we look at as an initiative. I think that's a great way to do that kind of stuff and to use the other clubs and get them engaged and see who is wants to, you know, wants to, uh, to follow through with that. So there's ways to get that initial contact. And if those, you know, now it becomes an intranet within the e-club world. That's right. To work. It sounds like a fantastic idea. And I think it's something that we have been lacking and been looking for, for that matter, too. Well, it's sort of that, that one thing that might be the thing that kind of binds us all together is certainly the peaks being the, one of our main areas of focus. And it would be a way to engage e-clubbers around the world in this one project with Terra Club. Absolutely. Yes. Um, uh, Rudy had to leave, but I know he would be jumping on this one uh, big time for sure. So, uh, so that, you know, we'll have great support that way as well. Good, we have five more minutes. And with that, I'd like to uh, move it over to Brian so we can uh, have a little discussion on what we want to talk about the next time. And we may want to continue with this, uh, coming, you know, seeing what comes out of this as well. But Brian, you have any other 
questions, ideas uh, about that? No, our just, future. We're just going to throw it open to the floor for ideas for what we'd like to do. It, we originally set it up that every two months we're going to be meeting. The dates have been set again already for, and we'll, when we send out the link to this particular video, we'll remind everybody of when the next meeting is, which is in two months' time, which is going to be October. So any ideas for thoughts that we'd like to see discussed in October? The Peace Bowl thing for sure seems to be, we, we're going to make sure that that gets covered. Well, we'll have a meeting in December, so that's when we'll have the peace meeting. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Just before Christmas. <laughs> on, on December 25th. <laughs> no, no, not necessarily to have a 25th. Any other, any, anyways, any other thoughts for ideas? Yes. Uh, yes. Will or William? Yes. Who wants um, to go first? <laughs> well, our club is relatively new and we're, trying to do projects, but we're looking for ways to fundraise effectively. And with an e-club, at least we're having trouble figuring that out. I mean, crowdsourcing or whatever, crowdfunding. Are there enough clubs out there that have had successful fundraising that they would be able to offer us maybe 15 or 20 minutes in a meeting like this uh, to give us some ideas? We, we can probably th throw that out again. I will send you a link, uh, William, that we did do that one of the previous meetings. We still have the recording. There were two or three ideas presented at that point. But maybe we can ask other other clubs in the meantime if they got some other things to add to that in the way of things. But I'll I'll make sure that you get that information. Get that link to Will. Thank you very much. The, the, the Rotary Action Group for Peace is promoting Peace Polls. So if you go to their site, you get more information yet. Great. <clears throat> Anything else for a future meeting that we like to discuss? Any right. other issues that we you would like to see? Didn't Will and Alicia have something to say? I saw you raise your hand. No? Okay. No, that, that was just on the Rotary Action Group for Peace. Thanks. Just throw out an idea. Would anybody like to see some uh, some ways that clubs actually perform inductions and bring new members into the into their e club? Is, is, is oh yeah, that's a great idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, I, I actually one of sorry one of one of the I don't know whether it was on here where I uh, mentioned it, but uh, when I was in Hamburg, I was speaking to. Um, uh, the Rotary people that were doing um, virtual reality and immers immersive technologies and we're interested in immersive technologies and one of the things we're exploring at the moment with Rotary is actually to have um, virtual inductions um, so whether it'll be whether it'll be anywhere near the time next in October maybe not um, but uh, the idea would be that um, you would actually send um, anywhere in the world um, the Google cardboard glasses and um, we would develop an app which actually meant that you could walk through our club, you could meet our president um, in virtual reality, you could meet the members in virtual reality and you could um, then explore some of the projects that we would be doing and um, they would be animated in some sort of way. So the idea at the moment, it's still early stages, would be to look at ways to use immersive technology to um, enhance an induction process for e-clubs and uh, that lives um, with our ethos of being a Rotary Club of Innovation I think so I don't know what you all think about that but uh, different idea yeah yeah, yeah it's I, interesting it's a good it idea be, uh, looking at a virtual uh, uh, booth or virtual integration at our district conference in 2020 when our member from our club is going to be district governor and so we're trying to look at some different things to do uh, that is you know even though we're only one club in our district that's an e-club but uh, you know to introduce with that depending on where we are with that we could you know connect you know uh, that also that's the kind of stuff even even if we're struggling with it it doesn't matter we can Im introduce it and these are the possibilities so so that was uh, today I happened to see a, a video of somebody who did that where she spoke in Japanese even though she doesn't speak Japanese as a hologram on the same stage where she was actually standing wow uh, making a presentation <laughs> you know and I said Okay, I, in, I looked into that to see if at our district conference we could get Paul Harris 
to appear on screen <laughs> as a hologram, but it would start at $100,000 to set that yeah. up. And so we don't have a budget for that. <laughs> but eventually with our eye behind it, we may be able to do something like that. So those are the kind of things we have to think outside the box and push ourselves to go in that direction too, because that's where the world is going too. Yes. I think we've got a couple of ideas there, Peter. We can certainly, by, by email, sort of inquire. It, James, you got a comment that you wanted to throw out? Why don't you unmute yourself? You, you're, uh, you're muted, James. Yes. Okay. Um, topic of pets for e-clubs. Have we discussed that? I'm a veterinarian. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> we have virtual dogs and cats. How's that? Yeah. No, but that's all. Brian, you're the one you could comment on that because I attend uh, attended pets online. Yeah, so District online. 7090, of which Darren's a, Darren's a president of the E Club is of, of Sony in 7090. They now do their initial pets online. Uh, so, so that's certainly something we could probably explore to uh, to to maybe. Sony. Take a look at their agenda, and then uh, maybe, maybe uh, we, we certainly have the people that will be able to put this stuff on, and maybe we, maybe we do have a pets for each club presidents. What, what, what's everybody think that idea? Something might be worth working on. Okay. Well, as long as it's something that RI is uh, accepts, I guess they will. Uh, we have our zone. Uh, I'm attending our zone. Uh, Assembly next in, in a couple of weeks. I'll, I'll bring it up with the with the RI director and just sort of see if we can get some initial positive feedback see, and say, yeah, let's. Is let's that Jeffrey? See, my uh, my diff my uh, my district did not have any issues with me attending a pets in seventy ninety. Um, you know, in the prop in part of the pre presentation because some of those things are obviously the same, maybe a little bit different from district to district, but. A lot of stuff then again that happens in the district for terror club does not apply to e clubs either. We, that's another thing that we can we, that we can elaborate and work on more specifically too. No, no, no district, no no district. Just, just, sorry, Martin. Our district actually um, did pets uh, the traditional way, but all the people that didn't attend uh, were able to attend on a online uh, version of pets. So they mopped up. They used it as a mop up. Um, yeah. uh, real quickly, Brian, that maybe we might consider at some point in the future having some like a zone director as a guest speaker at one of these meetings. Sure. Yeah. Not a problem. I know Jeffrey came out to one of our meetings. Yeah, yeah. Jeffrey. Jeffrey would be a good one. He would. Yeah, he, yeah, he was here. He was here. It was excellent. It's still on the recording somewhere too. So, all right. Thank you all very much. We're going to call it to a close. And uh, again, very interesting get together. Lots of good information. And I look forward to the next one and more participation as well. But you know, we record things, and everybody can profit from that too. So. Thanks again to Martin and uh, and Michael for uh, enlightening us about workplace. See you Thank all you next man. time. Thanks Take so much. Care.